We have uh, eyes on the vegetation fire. It's uh, going to be very difficult to access. Camp Creek Road is nearly inaccessible. This has uh, got potential for a major incident. Nine one one. What is your emergency? Hi. Um, I'm calling to report a fire. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's north of uh, Concow, up out of highways off of Highway seventy. It's north of Concow. Okay. Well, it's coming like towards my property. The wind is blowing. If you're if you think you're in danger, go ahead and and evacuate. Otherwise, they'll advise you. Okay. Hi. I was just calling to report a fire. Okay. Looking at our backyard, it looks pretty. Kind of close. That's uh, okay. off of Highway 70 near Polga. It's off of Highway 70 near Polga. Okay, it looks a heck of a lot closer than that. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm looking out my front door, and there is a huge fire very close to me. There is a fire that is north of Paradise. It just looks close. I could see the Ma'am, orange. unless you see flames, then it's just the yes. sun shining through it. Yeah, I'm just wondering, uh, are you aware of any major fires near Paradise? <sighs> really? And I just walked outside and I find that there appears to be a close there's a fire. Lot that of, I can there's see. a lot of smoke from a fire that's north of Paradise, north of Concow, out of Highway 70. Okay? Okay, you know it's up here. I mean, it's black right above my house. Do you see flames? No. Okay, that's smoke from the fire. Okay? Yeah, no, it's. It's bad. I can literally hear the fire from here. I don't know if I should go to court today. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. I'm heading back to Clark Road. I can't get out. There's a fire. There's a fire on the side of the road behind houses at the end of, of Oak Way and Wagstaff. There's a big fire there. Um, it's got trees and I don't know. It looks like it's going to get a house, but I, I don't know. Nobody can drive anywhere, that's the problem. I'm gonna take my work truck and I'm gonna plow through the fence so we can get out of the park. I just gotta figure out where I'm gonna do that at.
12.30 in the afternoon. 12.30? It's 12.30 in the afternoon right now. And it's this dark. It's this dark. This is Wagstaff and Clark. 12.43 p.m. Hoffman Road with multiple residences taking refuge in a creek. I can't get through the IC. I'm at 13006 on Cal Road with 20 civilians. We're completely surrounded by fire. We're taking a safe zone. Orville copies. Very limited on resources. Advise if you have medical needs, we'll try and get you assistance. Affirmative. Uh, if they can find an LZ, uh, currently we're working uh, three burn patients out with uh, burns to uh, approximately 50% of their body. Uh, if they could uh, land somewhere and uh, tie in with the medics, we're uh, ground transporting out now.
computers, computer desk, computer, no, the, <laughs> the flash drive is not there. Left of our TV. Every house on our street is gone. There's a steel shed that survived. Other than that. We were at my sister and brother-in-law's um, house, their home. They made a beautiful home for themselves uh, in Paradise, um, 5 Castle Drive. Yeah, just, it's fine. <laughs> well, <Huh>. still. <laughs> They're not going to rob it, so it's all right. <laughs> yeah. I've been staying um, yeah, in a storage area since the fire. In a storage area. Um, no, con no contact with Red Cross or FEMA I've, or anything? I've had contact with both. I filed a FEMA claim. And um, my sister and brother-in-law get insurance and get that because they're the only only one per household. So they, they have that, and it's rightfully theirs. So you because you weren't staying anywhere? Because I didn't have, I didn't have my own home or a rental for a, and just a regular landlord. Um, I didn't get any help. Uh, Red Cross said they'd help me get my eyeglasses, so I didn't have them. I have astigmatism in both eyes, and they called, and then I kept returning it, and it was them back to me. So um, I've had no assistance. I had uh, the Buddhist Foundation. They gave me some money, they gave me uh, $600, and then Cal Fire gave me 250 and otherwise I haven't had a gift card besides one. I spent all day following Red Cross on a bus, and the bus system in Chico is horrible. It's horrible. What do you mean following on a bus? Like so trying to go from place to location to location. Everybody says, well, you got to get your gift cards. I said, okay, I'm going to try. And it's been almost impossible. But um, I know there is help out there because there's a lot of wonderful people who have received it, and, and they deserve it, rightfully so, with their children. And, um, but since the fire, my PTSD has been really out of control, and I just kind of came out of the fog when my fiancé left me. So... It had a harsh reality that, I'm, that he had a breakdown too. So, so the, the fire um, was a trigger. After that, yeah. I worked for nine years, two full-time jobs all the time, and I, it's all I did was take care of everybody else. And so, when I couldn't take care of anybody, or I haven't been able to take care of myself, um, it's really just kind of shut me down.
you know, sights and smells. Um, not having a car again, being very dependent. Sure. Freaks me out. <laughs> I feel really trapped all the time. Everybody says there's help. I actually, Beauty Humane Society, they've helped me with the dog food, and that's been freaking awesome. Yeah. I've got dog food that was the quality I always fed Jackson, and so that alone is huge. What kind of dog do you have? Um, he's a <laughs> border collie mix, and Jackson looks like a Muppet. He's got like a Fu Manchu brown, <laughs> and he's all black with white, and he's just sure. he's just this whole soul. He's so sweet. He's an angel, and he's five, and he doesn't understand any of this, and he hates seeing me stressed. He's just the biggest, just gentle soul. Doesn't jump, doesn't bark, doesn't pee on things, never had. <laughs> it's the easiest dog. Picked him out right on this porch. <laughs> yeah. I was in Europe when the fire happened on November 8th. It was actually, I believe, was the first day of my river cruise through Germany and France. And so we watched it unfold. I mean, it was, and I thought that's right in my backyard because I'm from Sacramento and paradise is about an hour and a half from, uh, from Sacramento. I just, I wanted to help so badly, but of course I was on vacation. So, um, just kind of monitored the fire while we were gone. And when I got back, I knew I wanted to help, but I wasn't quite sure how what I wanted to do and how I wanted to approach it. So I just laid low for a couple of days and monitored the paradise, what's come to be known, or at least what I call the fire page, uh, monitored that a little bit. And I decided uh, I wanted to jump in. And the motto of the page is one family at a time. And so I needed a family to adopt. And the next day, I just was going through the fire page and saw a post from Rebecca Marie, is her Facebook name, and she said, my dad needs help. He had a stroke a few months ago, and he's in rehab, and he is presently living in a tent laying on the ground at the Nazarene Church, him and his girlfriend and their dog, Odie. And I said, that's who I want to help. So I contacted Rebecca Marie, and she put me in touch with her dad. His name is Mark Jones, and his girlfriend is Samantha and their dog, Odie. And I told them that I had a motorhome located at Collins Lake that they were more than welcome to stay in while they regrouped. And so he was super excited. And so we met them up at Collins Lake, got them in. Um, the people at Collins were amazing. It's a really nice campground, and they extended the stay limit and lowered the monthly rate that they charge. And so we got them in there. So that just went on. They were comfortable about Collins. And so I thought, okay, good. Now I'm going to find another family because it's one family at a time. I had them taken care of. So I went on the page again and just tried to search and find what who I want to help. And I, I found a single father. And I thought, I, I bet you the single dads are being overlooked. Because everybody wants to help the moms. And, and I get that. But um, I don't know why, but he just touched my heart. And so I co uh, contacted him. And his name is Jeremiah. <laughs> so my husband and I bought a tent trailer and we took it up to Chico. I'd never met Jeremiah yet. And he was living um, in his car at his ex-mother-in-law's. And so we took the, the tent trailer up there and for him to live in. And he was so excited. And about a week later, he was able to get uh, another, like a bigger trailer donated. Was hideous and not very nice trailer, but it was bigger and more spacious. So um, he in turn donated the tent trailer to a single mom with kids. So she had somewhere to live out of the rain and whatever. And so he had that um, trailer and he ended up at the shelter, the Red Cross shelter. Um, no hookups, no utilities, no nothing. Curfew. It was horrible. Um, and I will let their stories about the shelter and all that speak for itself because I didn't experience it firsthand. But where have you been since? I stayed at Walmart for a night until I saw people using heroin in the parking lot, and I went and found me a nice, quiet place out right on the edge of Chico until some lady freaked out on me and called the cops, and then cops came and told me I can't stay there no more. I have to go to Walmart. 
where my people are supposed to be at, and I have to go sign up for FEMA. They got here yesterday, they said. They didn't come for three more days. And then they kept telling us that we were getting kicked out, that we could stay, we could get kicked out, we could stay, but they take the showers away. They take half the porta potties away. They take the cell tower away. They finally open up the fairgrounds because that was a fire camp. Then they open it up to the Red Cross for a shelter, move everybody from Walmart over there, homeless transients from Chico and all, and drug use is out the fucking roof, uh, fighting, robbing. I had my car broken into. I've had my trailer broke, the window busted out. There's no mental health, anything. That's something I would like. Yeah. I've, I have a long history of PTSD. Sure. I wasn't in the military or anything, but I've been through a lot of shit. Uh, and then this, I haven't had a dream since 2005. And then after this, the second night of the fire, I went to sleep and very vivid dreams. And I've, I've asked about counseling. I've asked about psychologists. There is none. And there's a lot of people with mental health issues and there's no help for them. They treat me like shit. I look like a criminal. And that's what it is. There's no help. I haven't gotten any help from anything. I was on my third appeal for FEMA and said, fuck it. I got hit with the, fr I was in the first wave of phase two for the Buddhist uh, Zhu Chi. I didn't get nothing. Uh, United Way, nothing. Yeah, just generally nothing at all. If it wasn't for Facebook and the groups that are out there helping people, I'd still be in my car. Right. Uh, are you guys confused? We're no. not. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Suppose these people are the direct to the world. Do you mind telling us your name? Bernadette Peterson. Yeah, I brought you clothes. The duffel bag. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for those clothes. I'm very Oh, you're finding. welcome. You're welcome. The way they treat people, they, they push your buttons and try to get you to freak out so they can kick you out. Yeah, well, this is, it's so bad in here. It's, it's, it's breaking people's spirits, making people oh, yeah. do things that they don't normally wouldn't do. Well, I can't even get in there now. They won't let anybody in. I, I, can't, I can't even, I drove in last Sunday and wanted to talk to some of the people that I've met, and they said, you can't park in here now. They won't even let the news media in there. They won't even let anybody in there. Ron Howard came, I hope you know that, OB, came in and he tried to come back, and they wouldn't let him back in, and they, when he came here, they took away all the security guards. And nobody knows what's going on here, and they don't want anyone to talk to the media. The media has to go on the side of the road over there. So they did a curfew. In the beginning, you can come and go. We can go to that back gate. Now you have to be in by 10 o'clock, or you're out for the night. So even if you have a, uh, something going on with your family, you're out for the night. And uh, it makes you feel, you already feel bad enough you lost everything. But what you've got to deal with here is people treating you like you're just a piece of crap. And I, I'm, I'm done with it, and I have to leave. We're, they're closing this on the 28th. I heard that the Red Cross got $2 million. I heard the state was gonna take over. So they give all, everybody these 48 hour notices that make no sense. Like in my file, it said I received money, I didn't receive any money. And the food in there is completely inedible. And then when someone puts pressure and stress on you even more, and you can't even understand what you're feeling or what's going on, it, it makes you feel like, what the heck? I don't even know what's going on half the time. So. Well, if you get back on there, check out the Paradise Fire Adopt a Family. Okay. I, I don't want to go out there when other people need stuff, too. You no. Know what I mean? Everybody needs stuff. you got to help yourself. Yeah. Thank you very much, Brittany. We welcome. appreciate you guys it. guys have a great day. Thanks. You as well. And another time, Johnny and Brittany picked me up here, and I could still get in here, and took me over there to see their trailer. So I, we got them donated, and I wanted to see, you know, how they were doing and what they looked like. Right. Um, yeah, but this was packed. You used to take the donations right here? Yeah, there was a tent, that's what I'm saying, there was a tent here. And we would bring the donations into the tent and we'd call the people if we had their phone number and if we, we couldn't get a hold of them, we just had to leave them and hope they got where they needed to go. Basically they left some 
you know, and, I, and I think some stuff got, I mean, I think everything I brought got in. Okay. So you go in, you drive in right here, mm -hmm. in between these temporary cyclone fencing, and then there's, there's the guard, see that little white house used to be the guard shack, or whatever, house, and they would either let you come and come over here and park, or they would turn you away, and then I was here last Sunday, and I wanted to see some of my families, and they turned me away, and they wouldn't let me park. They said, um, there's no parking and there's no guest passes. We're not giving out guest passes. So I just had to leave. And so these are probably people. These are the people that are left. That this was filled before? Filled. It was packed. And so, they, I mean, do you think they probably evicted over the last couple of days then, right? Or they, you know, found somewhere to go. When the fire happened, we were actually uh, on the bus. We took the six o'clock bus down to get to Chico. That and, morning. Um, yeah, the morning of the fire. And we actually didn't hear of the fire until we were halfway down on the bus ride. We started seeing flames and stuff. The bus driver was pointing them out. Um, the time. We didn't find out yeah. until about a few weeks later yeah, about the condition of our two, home. We had no idea because we were hearing weeks. from so many different sources that it was gone. People were saying it was and it wasn't, and then we couldn't get up there. We were just at the shelter and we were only going by what was on the news. Yeah, nobody could get pictures. Nobody was allowed up yeah. there. And so. we didn't have contact with anybody that we had lived in the park as well, so yeah. we couldn't get a hold of anyone. We were staying up until uh, about, a, about a week, we were staying at the Red Cross shelter. Mm -hmm. Uh, we started at the one that was at Neighborhood Church um, in the beginning of Chico. They opened that the day of the fire. So we stayed in that one, and then they closed that down within about a, about a month or so, and they started moving everyone to Gridley, and that was too far for us. So we stayed because we heard that they were going to open the shelter at the fairgrounds right. once the fire personnel left. We were staying in a tent at Walmart for about a week, and um, we came. We left for the day. We, were here, we didn't hear any of them shutting it down or anything. We come back, all everything's gone. Your actual personal effects? All our stuff, yeah. Your All, whole tent and everything? The whole tent, everything, gone. Do they have any, expl any explanation? No for explanation. Your... There was just cops that were telling her to leave National the property. Guard. National they Guard. Had big fences up. And fences security. blocking the whole grass area where yeah, people were staying at Walmart. Access. And they just had big old dumpsters and people were throwing everything away. And we, were, we still hadn't had heard word about our house yet. We, didn't, we weren't able to grab anything. We only had what was on our backs. So we were starting over again with just what we had and on we us. we had to march on over to the Silver Dollar Fairgrounds. And stay that there. That was the third stop. Yeah, yes, we started, we started in the family, family dorm. dorm. But I mean, the food was terrible. Was it would make us sick. We'd I'd all be sick. We couldn't even eat it. Nobody would even believe me. I had to take pictures of it. It was so foul. You can't Everyone's coughing all night. Everyone's people sick. People were dying. People were like, there's people that died. They got pneumonia. They had a, noro a virus outbreak called the norovirus, which was like a gastrointestinal bug Didn't that everyone was getting. It. Didn't tell anybody about it. We heard from the news. Yeah. 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 Like, like they kept CNN, it under wraps. You know, people were down there like, they're like, oh, are you guys here for the fire? And they're like, no, we're here for the, the virus outbreak. Yeah. Which is scary. But Red Cross wouldn't tell you anything. Yeah, Red Cross will never tell you anything. And with the shutdown day, um, they let us know that they're going to shut down on the 31st two weeks before. Yeah. They said in December, at the end of December, like, oh, there's a rumor going around that we're closing on the 31st. That's not true. And that's what they said on the news because we watched the news story. And then within about, you know, two and a half, three weeks later, they say they're closing on the 31st. Well, people, Red Cross has been was kicking, everyone kicking out. people out. There was, my rational thinking says, you know, they wanted to, you know, get as many people out of there as possibly legally mm -hmm. so that they weren't responsible for, you know, a certain amount of people. So they were actually kicking, everybody I know was kicked out. They just started kicking everybody out, starting... Yeah. You know, oh, he attempted to, you know, he pulled a gun on somebody. And these people know. don't have any guns. We're they wanted before we security. go in. Security, yeah, you, you know. Yeah. Oh, he threatened people's lives, or oh, he, they were caught with this. And yeah. it, you know, you actually talk to the people, and none of this stuff actually happened. So they kick everybody out. Yeah. So now and we never got any out. money. We didn't get any money from them or any donations or gift cards or anything. Nothing. Nothing? Uh, nothing. nothing from, from, is, there's like a couple of grants. We, uh, uh, we applied for the Red Cross. You're yeah, supposed to give you 900. They still haven't given us any money. Yeah, we're, we're waiting for a damage assessment through FEMA and through Red Cross. Yeah. Okay, so what do you... When you say you're waiting for a damage assessment, they haven't gone through they, addresses? They have. Well, FEMA, we had an inspector come yeah. by. FEMA already we came to, to our house. We had to go down to the site. Yeah. It's all paperwork damage assessment now. 
and they're saying i was like well can i get it like a time like no we don't know that i was like well can you tell me like within a month no we know there's too many applicants yeah. So we have no idea when that's coming. And then there's no housing. And then there's no housing anywhere. Butte County is completely full. And it was housing was bad before the fire. And then it got the even money, worse. It's, it's non-existent. Well, we, we were scrambling to try to figure out where we we're going to go. Because we, we thought we only had a week. We're down to like about eight, nine or eight, nine or eight days left. And they actually accused John saying that he threatened people, which he didn't. So they kicked, um, they kicked us out. They kicked you guys out? Yeah. Yeah. So then... Um, we went to Collins Lake the next day. We stayed in a motel one night. We called Lisa. You know, they we didn't know what to do. out in the middle of the it night. It was like 8 o'clock, 7, 8 o'clock at night. We were in the car. I had to call Lisa. I was in tears. Like, you know, I had the kids in the car. It was damn near 36 degrees almost, you know. And we didn't know what you know, we were They gonna wouldn't do. let us back onto the property to get our, you know, nothing. They said we they had said to come back, come back the next, the next day, day to get our things. So luckily she got us a motel room and we were able to, you know. But they did let you guys get your stuff the yeah. next yes. day at least. Yes, we were able to get it um, the next day, and we moved to Collins Lake. And we have everything here. Our kids go to school here. You know, he has work out here. Um, you know, that's that's the only reason we want to stay close. Otherwise, we would totally relocate. Yeah. Well, and then that's the whole issue, too. It's like with the housing crisis being the way it is, you know, all the little bit of money. And, I mean, you know, 500 from that organization, you know, 800 from that organization. All the money goes to is food and immediate housing you right. know a motel room you know 700 mm -hmm. bucks will take a week in the motel and then you're burnt right. you know and then you ate away the other hundred and then you're like okay well you know good for them they gave me some money but a week later i'm in the same position you know you can't invest anything or yeah it you just know, goes right away and gas gas is crazy when people buy us gas cards and stuff you know they help us out you know but it's without it we wouldn't have anything So, yeah. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. All right, you want to meet Celia? Yeah.
there's donations. There may be able to spot just to put a uh, trailer. Yeah. We'll call them. Main thing to do is definitely get the power hooked up. Mm -hmm. That way it's got electricity and the heat. Do you know if there's propane in there? Uh, yes, there is. Cool. Awesome. Well, let me go ahead and get this situated. Jake can help her unpack. Sylvia, can I get a picture with you? Would you let me do that? Can, I get, can I get a picture? I don't care, but I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> no, I'm take a All right. <laughs> Yes, my name is Javaris Roberson. I'm from Sumter, South Carolina. I started volunteering with Red Cross, and then somehow God connected Steve and I, and him and I are partnering now together, volunteering, helping out all the camp fire survivors. And Miss Sylvia, then they can't get out. What? This is my little girlfriend right here. <laughs> Smile for the camera, give me a hug. <laughs> Love of the deal. Tell okay. us when so we can smile. No, you're fine, it's a video, it's a video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been knowing Miss Sylvia for about three months now. In this wind, I'll tell you. I came out earlier for the first week, and the first couple of weeks, then I went back home, and then they asked me to go back out again, so I said, sure. Okay, I know. This is here at the beginning and at the very end. It's well worth it. It's been a very positive experience helping these people. What's the pup's name? Come on, let's go. Shadow. 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 <laughs> Look at that. Oh, I don't know if she will. <laughs> she knows that's home. I guess so. Uh, push me up. We're gonna get you put your grab bar on here tomorrow. Really the only way to get out of this thing. Yeah. Okay. There is an escape door over here in case for some reason you had to go yeah. out that way, but this okay. is your exit. Can you guys put some rails? I'm gonna get a safety bar and put that up tomorrow. And like maybe like the little handles on the side right there. Whatever it takes. Grab bar on each side. Mm-hmm. You're Just, the superhero. Yeah. You're doing all the work. You're so she does live in Grass Valley? Lori? Yes. And I will, I'll have her come into our store. Yeah. And Does see it, <laughs> how I know. I thought it was weird at first, but it totally <laughs> makes sense, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Samantha manages the hospice gift trip in Nevada City. Okay. And there's been a lot of Paradise victims that have come up there and taken donations. Survivors. Survivors. Yeah. They don't like the word victims, no yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. You guys are doing. I get it. Yeah, so I went to the uh, memorial where there's 86 people that perished in the fire, and I couldn't imagine. I burned 20% of my body, man, and just, just knowing those poor folks stuck in their cars. Cars, that's yeah. Some people never made out of their bed. That's where they found them, in their bed. So that's pretty sad, you know. So we had somebody that came in. They're now living in Nevada City. Yeah. And their son, the only thing they didn't, I'll probably start crying. The only thing they didn't get was the, their son's ashes. And it was up in the chimney. That's what this is, my dad. And so when they went back, they were able to take, dive, whatever they were dogs, dogs, yeah. dogs, and they found him. That's amazing. And they were able to restore. I mean, I just because he said that's the only thing we wanted was our son. Yeah, I watched them test it. So they took some ashes, right? And they went and buried him four or six inches deep in. <clears throat> I call it cake batter. Yeah. And that dog went to it within 30 minutes, found them exact ashes. So it just blows my mind that there's a scent that our ashes put off that is unique in its own way mm -hmm. that a dog can find. Yeah. The training that a dog goes through. Well, thank you guys. I gotta go home to my kids. Got a ride. I got a ride, yeah. All right, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. So, this is just this one roadblock, you know what I mean? She's, this. she'll call this home for a minute, you know what I mean? This yeah. is, get her dogs out of the car. She's got plenty of friends. Good. So, I'll build her a deck tomorrow. You talk to people in the morning on the phone, it's like, the things that we go through, right? It's like, who thought we'd have been right here when I talked on the phone? <laughs> yeah. This yeah. morning was the first time, yeah. right? I mean, just, the, you know, I'm living minute to minute. I was hour to hour last week, and I was like, okay, I can't live. 
I gotta go back to minute to minute. Because I have no idea what the next hour holds. I got people that I've dropped off in the woods that just wanted to tent a sleeping bag to to I on the way home I'll stop I'll show him. I got a guy cold that I got out of the shelter and I says, Jake was with me, I said, Where are we gonna take you? He says, Oh, let's just go out towards Corny. We start driving, he's like, Oh, this looks good. I'm like, what do you mean this looks good? So he's out here in a trailer that I got donated to him in the middle of a walnut orchard. It, it just that some people just to them that's okay, that's what yeah. life's gonna be. So Alrighty. you guys drive safe, safe travels and uh Thank you. until next time, right? Good morning, everybody. Uh, Facebook Live um, this morning. It's Friday. 10 a.m. today, we get our keys to a rental house in Chico. And what we've done is we have donated our trailer to a family. Uh, they're living in a small trailer. They've got three small children. There's five people living in their trailer, and they also have a couple dogs. So as they pull out, I'm going to turn my camera around so you can see what's going on. This is a beast of a trailer. This is something that was donated to me and my family that we are donating to another campfire survivor. Uh, it's been a beautiful home for us for the last seven months. Um, and it's out of here. And so I just wanted to explain to you what was going on right now. Thank you so much. We got to say hi to everybody. Oh, hi and thank you. <laughs> we look like we're uh, orange. We're tan. Oh, yeah, on there. Well, thank you for this. I really have hot. <laughs> Didn't you know it's cold today? <laughs> I know it's cold. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Here's her ramp that I built her. Um, it's cold, okay? It's not cold right this second. As you can see, she's bundled up. She's in a coat, she's in a beanie. This isn't a place for anybody. I guess living in a trailer, it's a way of life right now, but at her age, all I'm trying to do is help. If there's anybody out there still, I know that she's got a, a dog or two right now, but um, she needs a place to live, okay? I, don't, I can't see her staying in this trailer all winter long. So please, the word still needs to get out. If there's anybody out there that can help Sylvia get into a, just a, a small place. Sylvia, what would make you happy right now? To have a home. Yeah, I know this trailer's a roof over your head, but it's not. Oh, I like it. It's home, but not like a home. I know. No. I know. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Yeah. What else do you need? Are you okay? Oh, I'm fine. I know you are. <laughs> it's so good to see you. You too. And say, ah, my chair burned. And I was fortunate that the when the hopefully we have her taken care of. So you just meet these people along the way that need help in any way, and you just do the best you can. In paradise. And five Castle Drive. Yeah, I just said so. <laughs> well, <Wow>. still. <laughs> You're not going to rob it, so it's going to do it all right. I don't. Right. And if that's breaking the rule, then I'll break rules. But I, I don't need permission to feed somebody. We'll grab anything. We only had what was on our backs. So we were starting over again with just what we were had and on we us. We had to march out over to the Silver Dollar Fairgrounds. And stay that there. That was the third stop. Generally nothing at all. If it wasn't for Facebook and the groups that are out there helping people, I'd still be in my car. <laughs>